Shalom and greetings from Jerusalem. You know me, Joan Lippis or hashtag Joni in Jerusalem, welcoming you to Lunchtime Prayer for Israel. I'm just so excited to keep on going because this is, it's difficult stuff. It's kind of scary stuff, but it's exciting to see what scripture says because it's coming alive before our very eyes today. So we're going to finish what we started yesterday. The title, of course, is The Covenant with Death, Part 2. Now, when reading scripture, in order to truly understand what is being said and then to apply it to today and to our lives, it is crucial that we understand its contextual relevance. The majority of the Bible is all about Israel. So we have to understand and not forget that Israel is unlike any other nation. Why? Because God made covenants. God made covenants with Abraham and then confirmed to Isaac and Jacob and then later with David. Those covenants made Israel, the people and the land, unique in a unique relationship with him with specific privileges and responsibilities shared by none else. Now, as such, God expected Israel to turn to him, trusting in him to provide and protect her. Now, of course, when we're talking about Israel, we're talking about the people and the land. You cannot separate the land, although many people try to do that. They try to take the land away from the covenants. We can't do it. It's part and parcel because this is the land, this is the city where God chose to put his name. So, of course, he was going to protect and provide for her. But sadly, sadly, Israel then and today usually turns first to other nations to protect her. Now, Isaiah captures God's response in one of these situations when Israel must have been facing a situation which she thought was overwhelming and so, once again, she made a covenant with those she hoped would protect her. And like before, the result was not what she hoped. And you can hear God's sarcasm as he confronted Israel. Now, usually I read from the New King James Version. I love the poetry of, of the King James, but I like the New King James because I can understand it. But in this case, the English Standard Version is much easier to understand. So follow me, please, in Isaiah 28, verses 14 through 19. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers who rule this people in Jerusalem, because you have said, we have made a covenant with death and with Sheol. We have an agreement, so when the overwhelming whip passes through, it will not come to us. For we have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelter. <laughs> you know, come on, God's got a sense of humor. Boy, is he mocking Israel. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. And I will make justice the line and righteousness the plumb line. And hail will sweep away that refuge of lies and waters will overwhelm the shelter. 
then your covenant with death will be annulled and your agreement with Sheol will not stand when the overwhelming scourge passes through you, you will be beaten down by it. As often as it passes through, it will take you. From morning by morning, it will pass through. By day and by night, and it will be sheer terror to understand the message. You think God is kidding? No. God means what he says, and he says exactly what he means. And unfortunately, in the very near future, Israel will once again be lured into making a covenant for peace, which will at first seem perfect, but ultimately lead to great devastation. And as we prayed yesterday, we want to pray for Israel to beware of a covenant that seems so good, but will lead to the covenant of death. Amen. So thank you oh so very, very much for praying with us, praying for Israel. It's the way you bless. And remember, God said to Abraham, I will bless those who bless your descendants, but I will curse those who curse her. So there's no better way to bless than to pray for her and proclaim the truth of God's word. The only covenant that we want to enter into is the new covenant. The new covenant that was cut by the blood of Yeshua on that cross. When we enter into that covenant, our sins are forgiven. We are reconciled to God because he washes away all of our sins. And our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's the covenant that we want to be a part of. So if you haven't entered into that covenant yet, please do so. It's very simple. By just admitting that you are a sinner. Come on. We just finished Yom Kippur. We all know that we're sinners. And we all know that there is nothing that we can do to be forgiven. No amount of good works we just can't because the sin is in our heart. And when we will come to God in faith saying, Lord, you have said, I can come to you. I can lay all of my sin upon the back of Yeshua in faith. He also takes my sickness and my sorrow. I give you my life. I give you my past. You will cleanse it up. You will take care of my present and you will bring me into your future reconciled to you sinless. Amen. And with that, I do say, Shalom, Lehitra Ot, from Jerusalem.